green is the fire of the rainbow so high The first type of interval that we're going to be looking at is the 40-20 interval. Now, obviously, one thing to note about pro riders is they do huge hours. So this is a four-hour ride with intervals. Obviously, if you have less time, you won't be able to do that. Um, so you'll see James Knox. This is just before Tour Down Under. So I believe this was somewhere sometime in January. We'll be able to see uh, Tuesday, the 8th of January. So Tour Down Under was a couple, week, um, couple days away. And um, so most of this, you can see, is just easy, th easy tempo, um, nothing too crazy. There was a little bit of efforts here. But, you know, pretty easy. Um, so these are the intervals he was doing. So you can see it's six minutes at 390 watts. And so he is about 40 seconds on, which is this interval here. 38 seconds, obviously, more or less. And then 20 seconds, just real cruisy. Like, obviously, real cruisy for him is like zone two, so 226 watts. But for you, it might be less uh, or might be more, depending on your threshold, obviously. So you can see this is obviously super good because it gets you similar efforts to racing these really hard intervals and easier intervals. Um, then it also increases your VO2 max because you're effectively doing six minutes at 390 watts, which for him is about threshold. But these over bits do improve your. Um, so this is about his 20 minute power, more or less, um, from what I've seen before. He does another one of those, slightly less power this time. So obviously, 10 minutes recovery was enough. Then he has another nine minutes recovery, does another big block here, 362 watts. So you can see he probably went out too hard and then just does eight minutes at like tempo to you know, finish the session. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's one session that I would definitely recommend just before racing starts, 40, 20s, 30, 15s, any sort of over under interval before that, I would highly recommend um, for you to copy, um, you know, obviously fit it in as much as you can. Um, so, you know, if you have four hours and your race is going to be long, I'd do it like that. But obviously if you only have an hour, then that's fine. You can do it in that. But yeah, I'd recommend doing these probably like you know, two weeks, three weeks out from your um, first race of the year. Um, I find that after your first race of the year, you've got that snap in you and it's, um, it's all good. You don't really need to do them that much. This is something not to do. Uh, this is on the Team Sky training camp from 2016 for, um, in Tenerife for the tour. Uh, this is Ian Stannard's power data. I have made a video on all of his power data. I'll try and link that below. It's very fascinating, even if I do say so myself. So anyway, you can see 310 normalized for five hours. He's a big boy, but that's still big, big numbers. So anyway, this is his ride, and you might... So this is basically why you shouldn't do it. So the first half, zero training benefit. Literally an hour, 40 minutes at 140 watts. I mean, unless your threshold is 140 watts, that's going to do nothing at all, or, you know, around that sort of level. Then he does his first climb at like 330 watts. So again, that's like tempo for him. His threshold is like huge, it's mad. And then he basically just cruises around again down this climb. And then the big interval, I guess, is this climb. So he does two hours 34 at 332 watts, which quite frankly is like tempo for him, like sort of low zone three sort of level. And like that doesn't achieve anything really unless you have huge hours and are doing huge climbs. So I'd say to yourself, if you are racing two hour, no, sorry, an hour climbs, yeah, this is probably useful. If you have unlimited hours in the week, this could be useful. But I'd say for 99% of people, this is a complete waste of time because you'll just ride at tempo for two hours, get home, feel tired, but like you'll feel tired the next day. So you won't be able to do hard intervals, but you won't have gained that much. So obviously for him, with any else, they well, Sky as they were back then, he's got unlimited time. You can see 350 watts for like, an hour 36 but like this is something that he could potentially have to do he needs to get better at riding at tempo for a huge amount of time because you have to think also what is his job in a grand tour park big standard boy on the front and just ride at like 350 watts for two hours on the front or two and a half hours to bring back the brake or whatever so this is literally his job so he's doing exactly what he needs to do so it makes sense but you do not need to ride on the front at tempo for two hours because <laughs> Like, unless you happen to be riding a Grand Tour or like sort of continental level rider where teamwork is more prevalent. So yeah, this is something I would not recommend to anyone unless you are doing exactly what Ian Stannard does. And I think this is the thing within our training, when I've looked at it and Sky's training, is that they're very specific. I'm going to get into burnout's data and why you should do some of it and why you shouldn't do it some of it in a bit.
Oli Nason's Cafe Ride. This is probably not something you expected to see, but I rate this 100%. Two hours, zone one, easy as. Heart rate 107 at 200 watts. It's absolutely mad how fit they are. But um, this is why I 100% recommend when you're at rest day. Real easy. You can see it's critical power here. But thanks to someone who pointed out Strava Source, absolutely legendary thing. Gives me the normalized and everything. And um, you can see here, if his FTP is right, which it probably is, it's like 55% intensity. Like, his FTP is probably a bit higher, so it's probably even less. But yeah, this is like, you know, obviously if you have less time, you just do an hour. But recovery rides, rate them 100%. Try and get them as flat as possible. Pedal, you know, just cruise around. Don't do anything hard. He does a couple sprints, but like 792 isn't huge for him. But literally, like, you just want it so easy. High cadence. You can see here, 86 cadence. Like, just spinning around. This is what I mean. 200 watts, 90 cadence, 108 heart rate for him. Just loving life. So, yeah, 100% recommend recovery rides. Do them any time of year. If you're having a day off, I recommend two days off a week, um, generally. So maybe three days on, one day off. This tends to be what the pros do. Um, and yeah, so if you have one day off, then yeah, just, you know, hour easy, two hours easy, whatever you feel like. But real easy, zone one, nothing hard at all. Workout, I highly recommend. This is my coach, old Tom Bell, and he is one of the best in the market at this. Four hours zone two, so you're like, okay, so decently hilly ride, 114k, 2000 meters of elevation. Look how smooth that is. It's like zone two the whole time. We look at his zone distribution, which I think might be slightly off 71% in endurance on a very hilly ride. And this is the thing if you're going to do zone two, top tip, flat as possible, pedal the whole time, maximum training benefit, maximum time spent in zone two. This ride, obviously, I recommend doing endurance rides two, three times a week for sure, minimum. Try and get at least two to three hours, and if not, do more. As basically, zone two, as many hours as you can do, the better. You're going to get faster, helps thrash your old health, everything. It's just the best thing ever. And anyone who doesn't like zone two is dumb and stupid. Zone two is the best thing to do. But just look how smooth it is. It's, it's tremendous. It really is. This is what you want to see no pedaling. The best thing is to look at the cadence. You basically want to have none of these points where you're not pedaling. So here's a couple here, but like if you look at most of it, pedals on the downhill, pedals on the uphill, same power. It's tremendous. So anyway. This is something else that I wouldn't recommend doing unless you want to win the Tour de France. Egan Manau and his sweet spot hold and surges. A lot of interesting stuff going on. And it's a big ride, obviously six hours, but you know, if you want to win the Tour de France, you need to do six hours. If you want to win like a nap B in the UK, three hour road race, six hours probably isn't necessary can help but you know anyway so first of all most of it if you just look at it is just cruising zone two um obviously it's at altitude so his threshold is lower his threshold i predict is about 360 to 370 based on his tt data from the tour of california um so, but at altitude i think it's more like 330 340 so anyway this is the climb we're talking about this is his interval so basically it's just zone two obviously you know my feelings about zone two this is the first thing 318 watts so that's like added based on his Altitude threshold is about sweet spot, and he sort of does these surges and then goes back in tempo. Which, like, okay, they're not bad. I do like okay. They're fine. I I don't really rate sweet spot that much. Maybe if you have no time, this could be decent. But spending like so for this first one, twenty four minutes doing this. Again, I don't think this is you. If you have this amount of time, I would recommend just doing a pure endurance ride. Like because most people are time limited, so I would say. You know, if you've got big hours, do the zone two stuff. The reason they combine is because that's what their racing is like. And then the rest of it, I think, I'm not sure if he has a little rest there. No, he doesn't have a little rest there. Sorry, I thought that might have been a rest there, but it's no rest. Um, and then just the rest of it, he rides at like upper zone three, sort of that sort of area, 280 watts. Um, again, like that's it for on a six hour ride. Like I wouldn't, I would say that's not useful for most people because you don't, you're not going to have hour long climbs in your races so i don't think this is necessarily that useful to look at if you're preparing for giro valedor style or, you know a big big like amateur race with loads of climbs then yeah fair enough do it but if you're you know in a typical country which doesn't have huge mountain climbs i wouldn't really recommend this sort of workout because like he does that stuff and then the rest of it he cruises in sort of zone one zone two like 180 watts like it's not really anything um Okay, he does a couple of sprints at the end, like here you can see 1,066 watts, which is decent. But again, I wouldn't wouldn't recommend this workout to most people. Um, I recommend if you had six hours to ride, I just ride six hours zone two, 
you'd get more benefit, you wouldn't be as tired the next day. And then on your days where you had less hours, um, you could just do the really hard in intensity. Um, but obviously this is just going on, the average person is 10 to 15 hours a week, 10 to 15 hours to train and not someone who has 32. So thanks for watching. That was my first little episode on pro rider data. Should you follow them? Should you ignore it? Uh, if you want me to do any more, let me know if you've got any riders who you really like and say, Charlie, look at his power data. Should I be doing his infills or whatever? Uh, then let me know as I'm always keen to look at pro rider data.